Hello and welcome to another tutorial on iColorama, this time on the new release 3.8 and a new feature in it, Compose. Compose allows you to assign patterns to different areas of your image. It kind of posterizes your image into five different areas and then you can assign patterns to the individual ones. The image that you see in front of you was an abstract created in the Tangent app. And then I use com used Compose to put patterns into the various shapes. So let's take a look at how it works. I'm going to bring up a photo here from my library. In this case I'm going to be using this image of my daughter from a beach from several years ago. Because the uh, process of dividing the area into, uh, dividing the image into five different areas, this posterization, uh, works on tonal levels, I want to make sure that I've got a wide range of tones in this image. Um, it's a little washed out, a little, uh, not enough contrast. And so I go into Adjust, Levels, and I pull up the Minimum Input slider down here at the bottom, just a little bit, to make sure I have plenty of blacks in the image. I could even do the same over here on the right with my Max Input, pull it down just a little bit to make sure I've got plenty of whites. I'm going to apply that, and then we'll go into the Compose feature, which is under the Preset menu. I tap Preset, and then over in between Pattern and Border, you'll see the new Compose feature. I tap on that, and it starts to process. It starts to break the image down into its five different areas. Down at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see three sliders, Opacity, Size, and Threshold. We're going to be adjusting each of those as we continue on. The next thing you'll see is five thumbnails. These five thumbnails contain five patterns that it's assigning to different portions of the image. Right now I'm seeing mostly the stripes and the crossword. If we look at the thumbnails from left to right, there's a lattice, there's sort of an art deco leaf type pattern, we've got our crossword, we've got our stripes, and we've got a flat color white. So those last three we see, but we don't see any of the first two patterns. You can change which patterns are assigned to which areas of the screen or of your image by using the threshold slider. As I move it to the left, you'll see that it moves, it ar moves around where each uh, pattern is assigned. We're now seeing a little bit of that Art Deco uh, leaf type pattern, um, but we're still not seeing any of the lattice. So I'm going to continue to move it over to about 0.6. Now you can see that we have crossword, we have all the different areas. I'm going to adjust that a little bit more. Not seeing enough of the lattice here. There's the lattice. Okay, that has everything. Oops, turn it back there. Okay, the lattice is over the face. We've got the Art Deco uh, leaf type pattern on the shirt. We've got crossword up in the sky, and we've got stripes, and we've got the white. Let's start off with the lattice over the face. Since that's over the face, I'm going to want to change that to a pattern that uh, is not quite so obvious. You change the patterns under Preset. You'll see now a table. There are 48 patterns that you see here on the screen in this table. There are 306 in all. And so you can scroll down to see all the different patterns that are available for you to use. I'm going to want to use something that's not quite so obvious, maybe these dots right here. Next I'll move on to the Art Deco thumbnail, 
And since that's over the shirt, let's say I want to change that to um, a nice plaid. The sky is the crossword. And so I want something bold there. So I'm going to tap the crossword thumbnail and then tap this. I like that arrow stripes there. Next we have the stripes. I think I'm going to leave those as they are. And then finally the color. You can see the color white is the first pattern available here. I'm going to change that white. I'm going to put some flowers in her hair with this pattern right here. I can change the size of those flowers by using the size slider. If you go back and look at, as each, I touched each of the five thumbnails, then that indicator below the size slider changed from one through five. So this is the size of the five, and I can make it smaller. I can make it larger. But I think I'm going to stick, yeah, I think I'll stick with something larger. Let's stay right in there. Okay. So that now I've got my five patterns assigned. I can look at the color, the overall color. Here's a color picker, and it's going to tint the whites that are in the image. So I can pick a color that's in the underlying image. Let's say I take this brown. That's really kind of nice. It gives a nice color to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the color there. Now I'm going to change the opacity to bring back some of the underlying image. Okay, so at this point I can go back and I can change any of these uh, patterns or um, you know uh, patterns or the color the threshold if I wanted to change the threshold from 0.45 down to 3.4 you'll see that it moves the moves the patterns around within the image Let's put it back at where it was, 0.45. Okay, now I apply that. Probably the next thing that I would want to do with this image is put a little texture in. in those flat areas, I just need a little more texture in. And so I wanted to show you a hint of how to deal with textures in iColorama. There are certain of your textures that are very gray. Let's take this one that is the uh, seventh row down, the first one, which is one of my favorite textures. As you can see, as I move the sides, size slider around, and you can see where that texture is moving around, it's very gray. And that's because it's being applied in multiply mode. If I instead apply it in soft light and up the contrast, then the texture becomes colored by the color underneath it, rather than just being gray. And it's a much more natural texture. Change the size, and then bring down the opacity to make it more pleasing, not so obvious that it's a texture added. I can apply that and come back in with a even more obvious texture. Let's take this one um, right here. That's in multiply mode. If I change it into soft light, up the contrast, up the size, and then lower the opacity. Now I would probably finish that off with a nice shaped vignette and a border. But um, let's just leave it at this for right now. And I hope you've enjoyed our little look at the Compose feature in the new release of iColorama. Until next time, enjoy!